out that I didn't have anything fun to do on the 4th of July. But then your dad invited me over and I had so much fun watching fireworks with you all. We were so thankful you were able to come over. Hello, Explorers. I want to thank you for tuning in today. It's going to be a great day to learn more about God's plan for us. I am so thankful that we get to meet together in this way and still get to visit our special classrooms. We are very thankful that we have these really cool rooms to learn more about God's Word in. Let's see what's going on in Holy Word Studios today. Hey Explorers, I am so thankful that you are here today. You know what, let's talk a little bit about being thankful. You know, being thankful is a time when we can think about all the awesome things we have to be thankful for. We also always need to be prepared to say thank you when someone has done something for us. Let's take turns calling out things we're thankful for. Each time someone says something, I'm going to add a little puff to this balloon. Ready? I am thankful to God for my friends. My family. And my girlfriend. I'm very thankful for my brother. Hey, wait, wait, it's my turn. How about this one? My car broke down. Hmm, I'm not sure that's a reason to add air for that one. You know, when good things happen, we are very thankful and full of praise, like our balloon is right now, full of praise. But when bad things happen, it's more like this. So why aren't we thankful when bad things happen? Well, in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's plan for us is to be thankful for all things. We are to be thankful and give thanks whenever we can. Why would God want us to thank Him for everything, meaning the good things and bad things? Can you at home think of a time when you experienced something good right in the middle of something bad? Let me give you a personal example. One time I got a flat tire, which is really a bad time, but I was so encouraged because someone stopped and they were so kind and they changed my tire for me. So something good happened in the middle of something bad. You know, it's easy to thank God for good things, but we can remember to thank God for hard things because he often uses those bad things for us to learn good. Sometimes God provides an opportunity for us to learn something very helpful when we are going through a rough or bad time. For example, so as all of you know, we have this huge situation with this nasty virus going around and it was really bad for me. I was going to finish up my last semester in school in Europe. And so I had to cancel all of that and come back and we finished the school year here at our houses instead of out seeing the world, which at first was really sad and uh, it just wasn't great. But if that hadn't happened, if all of my travels for the rest of the semester hadn't been canceled and a mission trip that I was supposed to go on at the beginning of May, if that hadn't all been canceled, I would not be here in Richmond this summer. And so for that, I'm thankful. So what we need to do is always work on filling up our balloons Let's fill those up with thankfulness and praises for the good stuff and even the not so good stuff. Our Bible story comes from the book of Luke, chapter 19 in the New Testament. 
You know, leprosy was a very bad skin disease that many people had long ago in Bible times. It would change the way you looked. You would have bad sores and bumps all over your body. Sometimes leprosy would cause you to lose your fingers and your toes. It was very contagious. So when people had leprosy, they would send them away from the town so that no one else could get it. You know, kind of like being in quarantine. They weren't allowed anywhere near the town or the stores or the temple. Often lepers would live near the city dump where they could find food and other things they needed. Now, sometimes people would walk by and the lepers would have to yell, Unclean! So that everyone knew, so that everyone knew that they should stay far away from the lepers. This was a very lonely life for the lepers because they had to leave their friends and family behind and live life in the wilderness. Often, the lepers would then make friends with each other and start living together, but they always wanted to go back home. Let's see what happens when Jesus was near some lepers. This is Thankful, the Thankful Leper. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus did many amazing things while he was on earth. It's true. One day, he was traveling to Jerusalem and was going through a village when ten men who had leprosy came to him. Now, in the time Jesus lived, leprosy was a terrible sickness that could be caught very easily. Because of this, people with leprosy were sent outside of the places that they lived. They were called unclean, and no one wanted to be close to them. Ah, gross! But when these men who had leprosy saw Jesus coming, Hey, Jesus! They called out to him and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus saw them and said, Go show yourself to the priests. Oh, hey, we in that! And as they went, they were healed and had leprosy no more. Whoa, woohoo! When one of the men saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God! Oh yeah, praise God! He thanked Jesus for what he had done. Ah, uh, hmm. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this Samaritan? Looks like it! Then Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Thank you. And so the man was healed because he had faith and he was thankful for what Jesus had done for him. So explorers, in Bible times, when a person was healed from illness, they were supposed to go to the temple and show themselves to the priest. Jesus told these guys to do so even before they were healed, but they had faith in God would heal them. So they followed Christ's instructions. Imagine being really sick, cast out, and considered unclean, and then being made brand new. Surely those guys must have been incredibly excited and thankful. Now, how do you think you would react if that happened to you? Well, remember in the story, how many of those men who were healed came to tell Jesus thank you? Hmm, I believe that was only one out of 10. And this passage mentions that the man who came back to Jesus was a Samaritan. That meant he was from out of town and usually considered not as pure or important in Jewish society. Yet, he was the only one who came to give Jesus praise and thank him for his healing. It seems like Jesus might have been a little disappointed that more of those men who received healing did not come back and give thanks. Could he have called down fire from heaven and punished the other men? Sure. But Jesus demonstrated ever flowing grace and mercy. He told this man to go on his way and was surely glad that at least someone demonstrated appreciation. 
Now, we need to remember that everything in our life comes from God. We often forget to offer him thanks and praise, but we should remember to always lift our eyes to the Lord and be thankful. It's also important to say thank you to people in our lives who help us all along the way. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise him all day long. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the earth and the sun and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me now, there's an unfinished part. But I'll be perfect just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand, cause he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the earth and the sun and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Cause he's still working on me. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. Saving me, keeping me from my sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise his name. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, but it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Hey Explorers, I have some items in this box. Now, there are all kinds of random things. When I pull them out, I hope that I can get you to feel thankful for all of the things that we will see. I think, I hope, 
I know you can. Now I found way over 30 reasons to be thankful for these items. And all I did was just quickly run through the house and grab a few items that were, were there and I just put them in this box. So here's the items. Let's see how many reasons we can all think of to be thankful for them. All right, are you ready explorers? Here we go. Oh, I've got a Diet Coke right here. Hmm, well, it's empty. We can be thankful someone got to drink the soda. It has a nice top. We can be thankful for the invention of the soda flip top. Can you think of some? If you put your ear up to it, you can hear an echo. Thank God for cool tricks, like hearing the ocean in an empty tin can. I'm thankful for Coke because it gives you a lot of energy and cools you off. I'm thankful for Coke because it provides caffeine to help me get through the day. Well, let's see what else I've got in here. I've got, ooh, a dirty shoelace. Hmm, what can I be thankful? I know, where would we be without shoelaces? We'd still be barefoot or wearing sandals all the time. So we can thank God for the very idea of shoelaces. Oh, and also, you know what? This shoelace used to be in a tennis shoe. So I'm thankful for tennis shoes because tennis shoes can help us run and jump and play and be safe outside. Shoelaces, hmm, I don't know. Shoelaces can be a pain in the neck sometimes because they keep coming undone. We are thankful for the invention of Velcro. I'm thankful for this dirty shoelace because it means I have places to go with my friends and I'm very thankful for my friends. Well, here's another item that I pulled out of the recycle area, a used battery. Well, now how can we be thankful for a battery? Well, you know what? This battery was once in a flashlight and flashlights provide light so we can be thankful for technology that allows us to have light in the dark. Or, you know, batteries are, may, are also used for toys. We can be thankful for that electricity for those toys to make them work. Can you think of some other reasons to be thankful for a battery? Well, here's one more item that I grabbed today. It's an empty plastic wear container. Now, you know, the last time I just washed this, the last time I used it, I stored homemade meatballs in it. And you know what? In our house, we are very thankful to God for leftovers because sometimes a lot of times they taste better the second time around. You know what else I can be thankful for? I can be thankful for this plastic wear because it helps keep food fresh. And I am thankful for that. Can you think of something that you're thankful for? They call this plastic wear now, but in my day, just a very few years ago, we called it Tupperware. But I'm still thankful for this. It held a piece of my birthday cake. Thanks God for birthdays, I think. What does this mean for us? Well, that's a great question, Zoe. You know, Often we forget to give thanks and go to God in prayer only when we want something. This activity should show us that we can feel thankful for even the littlest things. And there are great reasons to be full of thanks to God and to others as well. We each probably have a hundred things in our living rooms, kitchens, and bedrooms, which we could be thankful for if we just stop to think of what they are. When you go in your room today after class, I want you all to look around and start thinking and thanking God for those things. Why is being thankful a great idea? Well, here's why. It can shift our mood from bad to good. It can make us happier. It draws us closer to God. And it makes God happy when we appreciate him. Like anyone, God likes to do more for people who are grateful. 
we also won't be as upset when things go wrong because we will feel that we have so many great blessings to be thankful for. Going back to our key verse today, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all situations, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The best way to give thanks in all circumstances is to learn how to be thankful during the good times and when others do things for you. Then when those bad times come, you have developed a great skill of always seeing the brighter side of things. So let's remember to be thankful more often and for even the smallest things, it will make God very happy. And that's part of God's plan for us, to be thankful in all ways, every day. And I am thankful for you, Explorers, for being here today with us. Hi there, Explorers. It's craft time once again. This week, we are going to make a flower, and it says, I am thankful for. What you're going to do is take all of your petals and glue them together, and then on the center, you're going to write, I am thankful for. And then on each one of the petals, you're going to think about something that you're thankful for that you have been given by God. And then... You'll have a piece of yarn to tape onto the back and it can hang on the on your door of your bedroom or anywhere you want to hang. Mm -hmm. In order to make this, you'll need for mom and dad to come up to the building and in the plastic bin on the bench outside, you will take one baggie per child home with you. Inside of this will be everything that you will need to make your I'm thankful for Hope to see you again next week. Bye. Close today in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you wanting to thank you for all you have done for us. Help us to live a life where we are thankful for all we have in all ways and every day. Help us to look for the good in every situation and be thankful. We are thankful that we get to come together virtually to learn more about God's plan for us. Help us to put all these plans in our hearts and minds and allow us to practice them every day. We are thankful for our government leaders and help them as they make direction for our country. Thank you for our elders and be with them as they make decisions for our church family. Please allow a cure to come quickly so we can come back together. Thank you for family and friends and thank you for your son Jesus who can take our sins away. In Jesus name, amen. Well, that's it for today. See you later, explorers.